Oh my goodness. That is so big. If there's a fish that swims, I need to catch it. Fresh water, salt water, from a boat, from a kayak, or from four inches of ice. I thrive off the new experiences fishing gives me. I'm an ex-fishing guide turned videographer calling Lake of the Woods, Ontario my home. I'm Jay Siemens, and this is the Canadian Angle. If you look at a map of Manitoba, there is an ocean of a lake smack dab in the middle, Lake Winnipeg. I invited my buddy Josh McFadden to go on a winter walleye hunt. We wouldn't be roughing it though. We were getting the royal treatment from my buddy Matt, who runs Icebound Excursions, a snow bear rental company on the lake. We were looking for the big green walleyes that make this lake famous. Morning. What do you think? I'm not thinking of a whole lot right now, other than uh, getting after them greenbacks. Who am I talking to? The camera? <laughs> the world. The world. All right, next stop, big walleyes. We'll let you drive today, I guess. It's been a while, yeah. I guess I'll, uh, I'll captain the whole thing, the, uh, the old Greenback Express. Well, Josh is back to cook us some fish, maybe to catch some fish. We're gonna try to conquer Big Windy, AKA Lake Winnipeg. Sun is rising, so it's time to pop some holes. We're gonna lower the snow bear down. It's got a pretty cool hydraulic system and uh, we're gonna get fishing. What do you got there, Josh? Go in at an angle, give her the old flap, and it pulls up all of the ice in the 10 inch hole. The one scoop, wonder. Wham, into the pail. So we could be fishing four lines in here. We are just running three, just with how tight it gets with all the gear. Josh is using the jig and spoon. I'm using a rattle bait, and then we got just a subtle jig and minnow, a dead stick presentation. So this we're just setting here. The fish might come in. They might be interested in the rattle bait, interested in the jig and spoon, and then this is what often can seal the deal. Sometimes they only want to eat the jig and minnow, some days they only want to eat the active stuff, but it's always good to have that option. Snow bears are incredible machines. You get spoiled pretty quickly when you can be fishing inside in a sweater when it's minus 40 Celsius outside. The track system makes these machines virtually impossible to get stuck. With the added hydraulics to lower for fishing and raise for driving, they're definitely an ideal way to experience Lake Winnipeg. Oh yeah, when they start turning upwards, they're engaging. Oh, yes. I have so much ice in my Less line. is more, Josh, less is more. Let him eat it. Yep, nice. They can sometimes come up the hole so fast. Just like that one. Josh is the hot hands. He's Got more, that old, uh, the old spoon. He's more than just a cook. He can catch them too. So the Red River flows in here, which is, you know, an incredible tributary. The, the walleyes will come into the Red River and the creeks in the spring, and that's where they do a lot of their spawning. A lot of the fish will stay in the river in the fall time, but a lot of them just kind of hang out at the mouth at the south basin. Lake Winnipeg is an absolute beast. And 95% of the fishing pressure just happens right at that south end of the basin. And yeah, it generates millions and millions of dollars for tourism in Manitoba. And it's one of the easiest places to catch uh, you know, a walleye over 28 inches, it's accessible. I found like a lot of the really good fishing spots, you're not near a major city, but it's like half an hour from Winnipeg and you're out here. Yeah, it is a really easy drive. And if you've got a year where the ice is formed nice and flat and the snow isn't that deep, you can drive out in a Honda Civic and yeah. catch world-class walleyes with a group of people and it's pretty amazing. Well, we are making a move. That is the beauty of the snow bear. Doesn't really take too long to move. So we're gonna cut across some frazzled ice and uh, we're gonna head a little deeper. A, a, a typical movement cycle on Lake Winnipeg is coming shallower at sunrise and sunset and a little deeper in the middle of the day. I mean, there's always exceptions to that, but we're gonna head a little deeper and maybe that's where some of the fish have moved.
Nice thing about the snow bear is you can kind of get away from the crowds. As you can see, I'm not dealing with too many crowds today. But anyways, we're gonna lower it down, drill some holes. We're about in 13 feet of water now. We started this morning at eight feet, so made a pretty big move. We'll see if the fish slid a little deeper this afternoon, but uh, yeah, here we go. Oh boy. Oh wow. Josh, that's the one, that's the one. I'm gonna reel up the dead stick. It feels like there's a lot of tension here, Jay. Yep. I don't know why. That's a nice one. Go. Yeah, I got it. Biggest one yet. That's what we're talking about. All right, that is more like it. Josh, thanks for letting me hold your fish. Hey man, yeah, thanks for uh, getting wet for me. This is, um, yeah, that's that's a classic green bag. Yeah, like, there's so many fish this size in the lake, and it's just. Sorry, I cut you off. No, I was just gonna say beautiful color, like white belly, gr crazy green color on the back, and yeah, put fat, it back, fat tummy. Yeah, get rid of her. So, what exactly is a greenback walleye? Seemingly unique to Lake Winnipeg and its tributaries, the walleye found here have a stunning iridescent emerald coloration to their back. It's thought by many that the reasoning for this unique appearance is from the limestone substrate in the area. These greenbacks grow fast and they get big. This is without a doubt one of the best places in North America to find a walleye weighing into the double digits. Oh, here we go. Could it be me? Could it be Josh? Could it be neither of us? Come on, quit that. Just grab it. Oh yeah, he wants you. Oh yeah, a little bit of meat on that one. Look at its body shape. It's bigger than the last one. Look at the burbot. The leader here? It is a burbot too. <laughs> <clears throat> oh my this gosh. is <laughs> not a pretty fish. This is the burbot, AKA the eel pout. They are more of a, a nocturnal type feeder. You got those hemostats. These are fine eating as well. Some people would say they taste better than walleyes. Yeah. But uh, this guy's going back today, but what a cool fish. They are, they can really turn on at night. They are nocturnal fish. So if we stayed out into the dark, oh, there's another, there's another fish. fish coming in. We got to put this one back. But if we were to stay out into the dark, we'd probably stumble on a bunch of those. Oh, I need to get him in on there quick. He's going to just kill this rattle bait. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't see this thing. <laughs> All right. Well, we thought we were in the afternoon lull, but it looks like the move deep was paying off. Wait. Oh yeah, yeah, Josh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a healthy fish. That is a healthy fish. Hey, Josh. yo. Yes. Beautiful greenback. The colors on that thing. What is that? He ate it on the way down. Wow, Did you see that? That, was... that is beautiful green emerald shimmer. Woo! Yep. Another one cookie cutter, about the same size. Match up a green. Definitely, uh, I am fishing with 38 medium. This is like my favorite big walleye rod. But it is, it's a little bit tight. You're using a 32 medium. Yours is a little more suited for uh, snow bear angling. Mine's a little more suited for standing outside. Come on. Yeah, yeah, you got him. Could this be the one? I don't know. No, not feeling, not feeling jumbo. Okay. Nearing the end of day one. And Josh hooked something decent. Yay! There we go. Yeah, that's a pretty chunky fish. That's a nice one. One of the nicest ones of the day. Yeah. That is the spoon that's been crushing them. Are right, you gonna grab those, Josh? Yeah. There you go. There okay. are so many fish this size swimming around the lake, and we haven't tangled with a true Lake Winnipeg brute. But, but those are some great, like large, on average walleyes. Yeah. That's a wrap. We'll be back bright and early tomorrow morning, and hopefully the tables turn. Josh is going to do some cooking and I'm going to do a little more catching. We are back for day number two in the Canadian Cadillac, the Snow Bear. We got Josh. I just sat here all night. It was kind of cold, but I feel good. 
Icebound excursions, day two. This is the spot? Is this the spot? Yeah. You can see like right over there, we're in like two, three feet of water. We've got the shallow water highlighted. That's where we started yesterday. We were just sliding a little further down that ledge and uh, just a touch shallower, so. Nice mark. Came oh, he's coming back, Josh. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. It looks big now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, my gosh. They're just nipping. They are barely grabbing it. Okay, now we got two. Look at this. We got some competition. One I of need, these. I need to get one over here. Wow. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look at that thing go. Oh. There we go. Hammered him. Man, it looks so big. That is all right. We're off to a great start. Rattlebait's working. Oh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Here nice. Comes. Nice, that's a good one. Oh, the bite's on. Another nice one. This is gonna be a perfect eating size. We only need one fish between us. And uh, I think this is gonna do it. Nice blob coming in on the right here. Good. Oh, 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 big, big. Come on. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, that's decent. Maybe not as big as I thought. They all look big in the shallow water. This is what makes me nervous, just sticking my hand in there. Yeah. I don't feel like putting my hand in there. <laughs> that is a look great one. Look at how one. upset that fish is. That fish is angry. When their dorsal is perked up, it means they're not happy. <laughs> I mean, that's just what everyone says. I, Such I an aggressive fish. I didn't ask him, but. Oh, you yeah. can tell. Beautiful. Well guys, it is nearing noon. We are going for the midday move. I think we're gonna push deeper once again. That seemed to work yesterday. There's kind of always a midday lull, it feels like, but um, yeah, I just have a little more confidence midday going a bit deeper. Uh, we're in seven feet. We'll probably move out to 13, 14. This is all super gradual. There's not really any steep breaks at this part of the lake. When you look at the map, the contour lines are very far apart. There aren't any, aren't any real steep drop offs. So yeah, we're gonna go to, I don't know, probably 13, 14 feet again. And yeah. Stay mobile. Mm. Things are happening. Is that fish gonna come back? The one on the bottom looks nice too. Ooh, are we gonna double up right now? Nice. That looks serious. Oh, he got off, no. Oh. Oh, you gotta catch that thing, man. Yeah, come on. He's turned up on it. Yes. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. That's the fish I oh, just lost. Oh, nice. Yeah, that is the one you just lost. That's our biggest screen back of the trip. Oh, man. Wow. That is the fish Josh just had hooked, and that is just a great Manitoba greenback. Emerald, shining. Big old pretty girl. We should celebrate this with, uh, with some lunch. What's on the menu? Oh, we are doing a wonderfully fresh steamed dumpling, a walleye dumpling. Kind of like done like a pork dumpling, but uh, I've got a little bamboo steamer along and it's gonna be money. Josh is pulling out all the stops. All right, here we go. I like to slit the belly right down to the middle. I know not everybody does it the same. Behind the fins down, there's kind of two main ways that people cut fish. Some people will take the ribs out in the same step and some people will make it a second step. I like to make it a second step. It was a happy boy. That is gonna be lots of fish for the two of us right there. And now we're just gonna slide under the ribs and just kind of lift the knife up as we go, and the ribs don't run all the way to the end there, so you'll kind of feel where they stop, and then you can just turn your knife, knife upwards, and there you go. Now the skinning technique. Um, if you have long fingernails, you might be able to pinch it. There are some cutting boards that pinch it too, but I like to just cut a little nub. You're wasting a tiny bit of meat, but then you have something to hold on to. And I'm basically just shaking the skin back and forth. There you go. Some people don't do this on smaller fish, but there's a little row of, you can actually hear that. 
of bones, a little row of bones right there. And this is called pant legging it because you make a little pair of pants. So I'm gonna cut on one side of that row of bones and then on the other side. And some people like to leave those in. I like to cut them out because I don't want any bones. So there you go. So this is this comes together pretty simple. Um, I'm just taking wonton wrappers and folding them in a kind of unique way. And then we're gonna steam those. So that's how we're gonna get our dumpling. And we're gonna start with some garlic. We've got ginger. I like a little bit of celery in there. It offers that kind of like fresh vibe and a uh, nice little crunch. Green onions always need to go inside a dumpling. And I have a little bit of cilantro as well. So I'm gonna cut this stuff really fine. I'm going super fine with the ginger, really fine with the garlic, almost like making a paste out of it. Once we have that, we'll add a little bit of liquid and some seasonings to it and some cornstarch to bring everything together. And that's the walleye sort of pasty mix that's going to get used to stuff our wontons. Got some really fine garlic going on here. So if you got this at home, all of this stuff can go in the food pro processor. Cut, it, cut up the garlic pretty rough, cut up the ginger rough, blitz it until it's really fine, throw your walleye on there and zap it a few times on the, on the food processor. It comes together in seconds rather than doing everything manually like I'm doing now. If you hate cilantro, don't put it in there. If you like it, put a little bit in. Jay hates cilantro because he hates <laughs> everything that tastes good, so. <laughs> and much like I was doing with some of those other ingredients, it's just, there's a lot of chopping that needs to happen. If you happen to, happen, happen to own a slap chop, that's probably real handy. <laughs> but yeah, any way you can just chop this down as easily as possible and just turn it into, honestly, we're trying to get to like a paste-like consistency. So yeah, that's kind of what you're looking for, like a little fine grain. And what we're going to do is put some cornstarch in there that'll just help bring everything together as well. So I'm gonna take this fish, we're gonna get it in the bowl. Okay, so I'm going to get some pepper in there and we want something salty in there. So I've got a little bit of smoked salt and I've got a dark soy. So I'm just going to add a bit of it. It's salty, it's tasty. It already smells just so amazing in yeah. here. You get garlic and ginger, it smells nice. Those are the wonton wrappers? Yeah, so these are just a standard wonton wrapper. You can get the round dumpling wrappers as well, but these ones seem to work really great. All I'm going to do is take a spoonful of our mix, slap that right down in the middle. So I'm just gonna get some egg wash around the edges, bring the corners together and pinch at the top. and kind of just work my way down on all of those seams and squeezing out the air. And there it is. I, I would eat that raw right now. Ha, it looks delicious. Yeah. So there's our first little bundle that will steam up beautifully in the steamer. What I have this lettuce here for that's getting really solid really quick is I'm just gonna lay this down on the bottom because it's gonna separate the bamboo from the noodle because the noodles might wanna stick to this kind of shelving system here inside this bamboo steamer. That should be okay. We're just gonna get this steam going. It's gotta be, it's gotta be hot, hot steam. So I'm gonna get those dumplings, stack them in those layers and mm. let them go for a little bit. Snow bear dumplings. That water is actually boiling really good. So I'm just gonna turn it down a touch. Okay, we got one tray. All right, that's good. So how long you figure? Eight to 10 minutes. Nice. They're done? Oh man, these guys are steamed and hot. Ooh. Look at those. Usually I would dip these in a little bit of soy sauce, but we're not dipping today. I like a little bit of toasted sesame oil. We like it hot and spicy. So this is like a chili paste, garlic chili paste. We'll put a little bit of that on top. All right, my first time trying walleye. What's the official name we're giving it? We're gonna call these walleye, walleye dumplings. Walleye dumplings on Lake Winnipeg. Walleye wontons. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. So good. That chili, wow, that has some kick. Whoa. Yeah, the chili has a little heat to it. Whoa. So fresh, bundles of noodle joy. Mmm. I'll just keep eating. Unreal, dude. So good. So savory. All right, we got a couple more wontons to eat and then we are headed shallow for one last swing 
at a big walleye. We're going to go probably like five, six feet of water, shallower than we fished the last two days. But uh, we've been hearing, hearing some vibes on some big fish kicking around shallow. And we haven't, we haven't cracked like that 21, 22 inch. And uh, there's definitely a lot of fish bigger than that. So we're going to eat all of these. Thank you, Josh, for cooking. That's why I bring him fishing. And he outfishes me most of the time. So it's always good to have goals. And in Manitoba, there's something called the Master Angler Program, which is like a trophy type program. So if you catch a fish over a certain length, you get an award, you get your name in the book, and it's just a cool thing if you're, you know, trying to cross different species off the list. And for walleye, the length is 28 inches, a Master Angler walleye right there. So that is, that's how big of a walleye I want to be hold. Actually, I'd be okay with a 30 incher. A walleye this big is going to be in my hands within the next hour. But yeah, right there. It's a big target. We are using 10 pound braid with a 12 pound floral leader, which is, I, I like it for this shallow water because sometimes the fights are just so angry and aggressive with these fish. You need to just like, sometimes just haul them up. That's oh, insane. Whoa, 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 whoa. High flyer? Nope. Low flyer? Nope. Yep, on the bottom. There might be two or one really big one. Or just one really small one. Ooh. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Oh okay. my gosh. Okay. That is okay. a walleye and a half, bro. Come on, please. Oh my goodness. Yes, yes. Is this the one? This is the one. This is the one. Josh, he's in the hole. He's in the hole. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh! 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 Are your hands okay? Oh, they're okay. Oh, buddy. That is it. I. That, I am so happy right now. Look at that big perky greenback. So big! Oh! Look at that hog. We're putting it on the bump board. So close. Oh my god. <laughs> Can you guys see that? That is as close as it gets. Probably a quarter inch shy. What a way to cap it off. There she goes! Yes! I'm a broken record, but that is why you stay into the dark. You can see. Everyone else is packed up. That mark came in and just killed it. Yeah, man, that's why you stay late. That you was, have to. That was a world-class walleye right there. Unbelievable. Oh. So fat. Big old greenback. <laughs>